welcome to Say Anything with Allison. I'm Allison. On today's episode, I thought we would talk about movies that had unlikely characters that really told the story and that I felt were really needed. Let me explain. So I have always loved scary thriller type movies, but I hold a very soft spot in my heart for the supernatural, paranormal, um, haunted house movies, specifically ghost stories. I'm a sucker for those. Over the last few years, there's been what I like to call a new class of horror movies that have been coming out that don't rely on the gore and the jump scares. They rely more on storytelling. They aren't so in your face. I like to call them smart horror. They have slow buildup. They rely on cinematography, lighting, sound, sometimes lack thereof sound. There's nothing scarier or creepier than a movie with hardly any sound. And then just one like little thing just sets it off. So, but in most cases, for these new movies that have the slow burn, the slow buildup, they rely heavily on characters and acting. So if you have a good story and you have good acting, sometimes that can tell more of a creepy horror movie story to people. If that makes any sense. So let me explain why I got this idea. So recently I saw one of these new horror movies. After watching it, I don't even know if it's considered horror to me. It's kind of a supernatural thriller, but it's called The Night House. And it stars Rebecca Hall, who until I looked her up, I didn't really recognize her. She's been in a bunch of movies, obviously, but I have seen her in Godzilla vs. Kong the most recent one that came out, and Vicky Christina Barcelona. So you might recognize her if you see her. But she plays Beth. Beth and her husband, Owen, have built this beautiful lake house. And they live there. Owen, all of a sudden, kills himself. He shoots himself in the head on their boat at their lake house. He showed no signs of depression that anybody saw. They seem to be happy. So Beth is really struggling as far as why he would do this, why he would leave her, what what went wrong, as would anybody in that predicament. So she starts unpacking things at their house, all of his personal belongings. She starts uncovering really unusual possessions of Owen. He has books about the occult. He has a bunch of handwritten notes in those books that really don't make sense. And he has blueprints of a mirror image of their lake house. Kind of confusing. Then she starts seeing things. So she sees bloody footprints on the dock where the boat is still kept. I don't know why she decided to keep the boat where her husband killed himself, where it's a constant reminder, but she, for some reason, wasn't ready to give it up. So she sees bloody footprints coming out of the boat, out of the water. She sees shapes of a man's body in the house. She sees silhouettes of a face within the columns of the house. And that's what I thought was really cool. And another cool point that these new horror movies are bringing to the table is a lot of, you know, trickery of the eye. They had these columns in the house and it wasn't just straight columns. They kind of had like an oval type shape, diamond, I don't know, but you know. And at one point you would focus on Beth, but then your eye would go over to this column and it would look like a man's face. And then you would look at it and the camera would pan to it and it would just be the hole in the columns. It was really, really cool camera work. I noticed those things and I really, I don't know, I like that. I like that kind of stuff. The acting in this movie was so good. She had to maintain this range of of emotion throughout this movie. Similar to Nicole Kidman in The Others, 
regardless of if you like that movie or not, she was good in it. And Tony Collette and Hereditor. Both of these women had to convey so much emotion because, again, it's one of those slow build horror movies. Rebecca Hall shows such a wide range with her emotion. She has to commit 100% to this film because without that commitment, us as the audience is not going to feel the pain, the depression, the anger, the confusion, and the love that she has for Owen. She had such a wide range of emotions that she went back and forth in this movie and you really connected with her. Now, unfortunately, I cannot go into too much more of this movie because if I do, it will spoil the ending. I can't even tell you really what she discovered as she looked through Owen's personal belongings because it will just ruin everything for you. Um, It's got a great twist ending. I did not see it coming, which I appreciate because a lot of these movies, unfortunately, I sit there and try to guess what's going to happen at the end. And sometimes I ruin it for myself. I didn't see this coming. Uh, A lot of people I heard didn't quite get it. I completely understood the ending. I felt the ending. It's a very, very spiritual, emotional ending that she had with her husband and he had with her. It was, it's a very, it's a very, um, it just shows the connection that they had. I, I just can't go into any more. And I'm sorry. I hope, I hope everybody goes to see it. But the point of this say anything episode is I started to think that this lake house was just as much of a main character as Rebecca Hall was. It was beautiful. It had tons of windows, which obviously brought the light in during the day. It was secluded. There was hardly any neighbors around. But it also had a cold look to it. And when it there was just one homeowner left, it started to turn a little creepy and almost too much house for one person, in addition to the things that were happening to her. So... I started to think of houses from other horror movies that they're basically characters in their own respect. And I made a list because I like lists. Not all my videos will be lists, I promise, but I don't know. I'm a sucker for lists. So I made a brief list and these are a mix of creepy, creepy looking, scary feeling, but also these houses that without the house in the movie, I don't think it would have been the same film that we walked away with. It's just as much of a character as the main players in the film. So without further ado, here's my list. They are in no particular order because it's hard for me to put things in order from one to five or one to 10. It's like choosing, you know, your favorite kids or whatever. Even though I only have one kid, he is my favorite. So I'm going to start out with... The Amityville House. Amityville House. So hard to say. There have been many Amityville (laughs) movies. Almost too many, if you ask me. But for fun and personal preferences, and if you know why it's a personal preference of mine, put it in the comments below. We'll get extra credit points. We're going to focus on the 2005 Amityville Horror. So the house itself looks normal. Looks like a normal Long Island style house. So I suppose it's not considered creepy until you know the history behind the house. But I think it's a little creepy. It's got these two eye looking windows at the top. And the way that they're shaped, it looks like it's looking down on you, like with a creepy look. I don't know. The house is like, it's roundish on the top. I don't like it. It's creepy. In fact, the nickname for the house is the house with the evil eyes. So obviously I'm not the only one who thought that it was creepy. They have bad flower wallpaper and wood paneling. It also just adds to the fun of this 1970s looking creepy style house. It has a boathouse, which I don't know much about boathouses, but I find them to be a little creepy too because you can take somebody out to the boathouse, knock them over the head, throw them in the water under the boat, nobody would ever know where you were until the boat left. The 2005 Amityville horror movie had a great boathouse scene. 
check it out for yourself. So, I don't know. The whole house is just a little creepy. But again, even if you don't know the history of the movie, so you're just looking at the outside of this white Long Island looking house, it's not that creepy, I guess. But it is a main character of this film. Without the house and the evil presence in the house, no one would have became possessed and killed their family and gone crazy. So that's the main character you have to have. Next one, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Mansion. Not really a mansion. It is because it's huge, but not my type of mansion. So this creepy mansion house was built in 1854 and it's set way back off the side of the road in Texas, surrounded by dead grass and cornfields. It's got this run down, dilapidated look to it. It's got these giant pillars. It's got a creaky screen front door. I don't think that it has air conditioning because in the last few movies that they've done, it just looks hot to me, like really sweaty. It looks like it has a smell to it. It's not good. It's got a basement where meat cleavers and meat hooks are and all the crazy shenanigans that, that Leatherface did down there. It's just not a good house. And people still live in this house. It's an active working farm and people will drive by, fans will drive by. There is no trespassing signs everywhere. They are adamant, like, you're welcome to take as many pictures as you want, but no, you cannot walk around our farm. We live here. I don't know why they haven't fixed it up. Maybe I looked at an old picture when I Googled it, but it still looked really scary. I went and set foot near that house. However, aside from Leatherface and the rest of the family, this was a main character of the movies. You had to have this house. You had to have the field, the cornfield. You had to have the uh, just creep factor and the, the the layer, I guess, where he went and where they went. So that's that's my uh, number two, I guess. The next one, you might not think it's creepy, but the reason I chose this one is because one, I told you I'm a sucker for paranormal haunted house movies, and two. The entire movie is set in the house. And that would be Paranormal Activity, the first one, the original, the OG. The entire film, like I said, was shot in this modern house. And I feel that that amped up the, the creepy, scary factor to me. They were able to make this newly constructed house feel as unsafe as one of those old creepy mansions, like from The Others or The Haunting or something like that. <laughs> As you're watching it, you're like, you mean demons can haunt a new house too? That's something new we don't usually see. So this is a found footage movie, in case you haven't seen this movie. The setting is the main character. Yes, you have Katie and you have her husband, whose name eludes me. But you, you have them, but the house is the setting. The house is the main character. This wasn't the same found footage movie from Blair Witch Project where you were running around the woods. It was constant running and, and just like breathing and, and, and uneasiness. Everybody was just on the edge and, and running from things and you could hear things all the time. The creep factor from this movie came from the cleanliness of the house. How perfect was this house that this new couple moved into? And it was clean and the kitchen was bright and shiny and new appliances and it was quiet and it was in the suburbs and it had the stillness at night until every night something started happening. So if anything, we learned that new appliances aren't enough to save you from your house being haunted. As I'm building a new house right now, that kind of freaks me out. But without this house and the crazy things that were happening, Nothing, nothing, this would have been a boring movie. So the house and the setting within the house, the stillness, the, I mean, I want to say like the counters, like it just looks so clean, like nothing evil could be lurking in this house. Come on. So I think that it was just a great character for this movie 
and it was un- unexpected. On a side note, they are rebooting Paranormal Activity. I don't. I know they've done like five already, five or six, and I've seen every one of them. But they are rebooting it, and the small trailer that I saw looked great. It looked like it has like Amish kids in there, which any scary movie that has children in it that do things freaks me out as well. So I'm really excited about Paranormal Activity reboot. Okay, my next one is not really a house. It's a cabin. It is a cabin in the cabin in the woods. So at first glance, this looks like your typical old remote cabin, you know, a la Evil Dead type of movie where friends are just going for a weekend getaway, right? Yeah, nothing can go wrong. Wrong. This cabin has two-way mirrors, tons of creepy random items in the basement that will soon dictate what happens to these poor kids. Uh, It's got locks that automatically shut the doors on you. Um, They have vents that pushes deadly chemicals in the rooms. You know, and why is this? Well, because underneath the house, there is a secret laboratory. Under the floorboards, who would have who would have thunk it? And that houses a team called the Facility, and they basically bet on who is going to be killed first and by what creature. <laughs> it's amazing. If you haven't seen this movie, this movie blew me away. It throws all the '90s and 2000 horror movies on their asses. It's just so great. It makes fun of them. It's, it's phenomenal, but without this cabin, without what's underneath it, which is, I consider it's part of the cabin. That's where all the mythical creatures um, are kept in these glass rooms. You also have the grounds where other creatures like zombies come up. You have the basement with, again, I said a lot of like artifacts and stuff where depending on what they read from or what they take, it awakens bad things so i feel like the cabin and everything underneath it where the facility is it's it's all the character that is a main character of this movie and it's almost like it's in a bubble and finally last but not least because they're in no particular order we have the house from house of a thousand corpses so the firefly family house looks very run down on the outside very creepy. I would not want to break down or have somebody tow my car to this house. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. But inside, it's a whole nother creep factor level. There's creepy pictures. There's candles everywhere. Now, it might be set up like that because it was all Hallow's Eve and it's their favorite time of year. But I like to think that it was like that on a normal day. Yeah. There's animal carcasses. They have masks at the dinner table things on the wall and then we have you know sweet baby baby likes to decorate her room with her own style and I think that the quote that she gave was something like these are all my dolls and I used to like to chop their heads off and stick their arms and their legs and their heads and stick them on the wall so (laughs) they're just crazy They also had their own stage in the living room with a spotlight. So it just made it look even more carnival-like. Oh, it was just crazy. So between the house and everything that was in it and underneath it and the grounds and everything. Obviously, if you've seen this movie, you know what I'm talking about. Run, rabbit, run. It's a character. You can never take away from the Firefly family because they're all great characters. But without that house, without that creep factor of that house and how scary it was, you you just wouldn't have such a phenomenal movie as Rob Zombie gave us. So those are my five that I thought of. Obviously, I, th- I can think of some more. I have honorable mentions for Beetlejuice House. What a fun house. Even before Mrs. Dietz changed it, it was creepy and then she changed it. And then even though it was modern, it was still creepy. 
but, you know, ghosts live there in the attic. We had, you know, the whole town. It's, it's awesome. It's just a creepy, awesome house. Psycho. That's a given. The Shining, even though it's a hotel, they still lived there for a while. So it's a house. I wanted to put that on my list, but I thought people would give me crap because it's a hotel. And then I thought of the Klopek house from the Burbs. Not a horror movie. Great comedy. But that house was creepy. Inside and out. With the brothers and the sardines and the stuff they were doing in the backyard. So I love that movie. So those are my thoughts on houses that are not just settings from horror movies, but they are also major, major characters without which we would have a completely different movie. It might be even more boring. We would have a completely different, if not boring movie. Not that most horror movies can be boring, but they could also be better with little adjustments. Settings are just as important as the actors and can really cause an impact with the film. So go see The Night House and let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what your favorite haunted house movies are, your ghost movies, your paranormal movies. Let me know what houses you think that are good characters, even if it's not a horror movie, just a regular movie, because I can still think of other ones that are not scary movies. But my theme was scary. Tell me what are other essential parts of the movie that you think makes a film. Tell me in the comments. Yay. So be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. And be sure to check out my podcast on one of three on Cinema and Miss the Podcast. We just started our third season. Our first episode of season three was put out last week. It is part one of 1982 Tron discussion. We go into detail about Tron. It's a lot of fun. So you can hear any of our podcasts on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts from. Make sure to like and subscribe and follow us. And I will see you later when who knows what I'll say, but I sure will say anything and just ramble. So talk to you guys later. Bye.